look at creating this effect. Now, it looks fairly complicated, but the reality is it's surprisingly simple. And what's interesting about it is that all that fancy rotation is not the result of any actual rotation animation at all. So let's discover the secret of all of this. So project set up first of all, I've got 19, 20, 10, 80, I've got 24 frames a second, and I've got a duration of 30 seconds. So the first thing I want to do is just bring in a color solid. So we've got a nice black background. So make this black, not blue. And let's close up that group and make another one where we're going to do some work. So I'm going to come over to the library and I'm going to grab the gradient and I'm going to come to the inspector and let's just set this up. First of all, pick grayscale. Let's have a Y start of 540, that's the top of the screen, and a Y end of negative 540, which is the bottom of the screen. So we've got a gradient that runs top to bottom. So what we're going to do is actually make this gradient a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to grab this end position holding down the Alt or Option key, drag it to somewhere like that, and then grab this one here and move it just after it like that. Again, holding down the Alt or Option key, so we're making a copy. So the secret to this whole effect is that we're going to be using a polar filter to create a radial gizmo. So let's just add that to this group now. So distortion and polar. And you can see immediately we've got this result. And our vertical gradient has turned into a circular loop. But what I actually want is quite a lot more repetitions of the gradient pattern. And what I'm going to do to achieve that is to add to the gradient itself tiling and tile. I want to set the stretch value to the lowest it will go, which is 0.1. And I'm going to set the scale to six. And then I think I might come to this gradient and maybe just reverse it by clicking on this button at the top here. I think I prefer that look. It doesn't really matter, but I do. just kind of a bit more interesting that way. And then I'm going to add a filters, tiling and offset. So this is how we're going to create the radiating rings. So to this vertical offset, I'm going to add parameter behavior ramp, and I'm going to set the end value to 200. And then if I come to the beginning and we press play, you can see what's happening. We've got these really nice radiating rings. Already we've got something pretty interesting. But now let's add some complexity to this. So I'm going to add a filters, stylize and a hatched screen. And I'm going to set the scale to 100. And you can see how nice that already is. It's actually in the wrong order, but I just wanted to show you that because I think it's quite funky like that. And what it actually wants to be is down below the tile like that. I also want to add another stylized filter. This one is stylized and halftone. And here I'm going to set the scale to 80. And I'm also going to set that mix value down to 50 and the same for the hatch screen. And then I'm going to add stylize and pixelate. And this is where it starts to get interesting. So the pixelate scale, I'm going to set to 165. And if I press play, you can see how this is starting to work. So let's make a few more changes. I want to come down to the hatch screen and set this angle to 180, just neatens it up a little bit. So the key to creating this effect is going to be that we're going to animate the center value of the pixelate. As you can see, changing that X position value gives us this interesting rotating effect. I'm going to reset that to 0.5, and I'm going to add parameter behavior and oscillate. So the amplitude I want is not very much at all. It's one, and the speed is going to be five. But now if you look, we get this effect of rapid spinning, followed by these phases of it sort of slowing down again. So that is where all the rotation is coming from. It's actually not coming from rotation. It's just coming from moving that backwards and forwards. But because we're going through that polar filter, side to side movement actually results in that appearance of rotation. And what I also want to do is come to the half tone and add a little bit of animation to it as well. So we're going to take the scale and again, we're going to add an oscillate to it. So add parameter behavior, oscillate, 
and we just want an amplitude of 20 there. And this is creating more interesting segments in the middle. So this is all looking pretty ferocious. And what we really need to do is we need to sort of only see the center of it and then it's going to all look, look much nicer. So what I'm going to do is come to the library and drag in a gradient above everything else. Come to the inspector. Again, let's choose grayscale. It's a shame there's no black and white uh, preset, but um, you, you know, if you're sensible, you'll make your own and save that to the library. Anyway, we're going to make that black and we're going to make this white. And we're going to come down and set it to radial. And the Y start is going to be zero. And the Y end is going to be negative 540. And then what we can do is come to its blend mode and set that to multiply. And now you'll see we've got a much nicer effect because we're not being distracted by all that movement around the sides. And if we want to open it out a little bit, we can just simply select this middle tab here and just move it till we get a little bit more of the sides like this. So next, let's give it some color. So I'm going to come to filters and color and colorize. And we're just going to make this, I don't know, something like this. Then I want to add a neon filter. So glow and neon. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm not actually going to be using the kind of glow aspect of it. First of all, I just want to turn the mix value down to 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the outer brightness and the inner brightness down to zero. And I want to turn the edge intensity up to 200. And you can see how that's given us this really interesting kind of profiling here. And if we wanted, we could adjust these glow values. I'm going to go with something like 20 for that one there. I think 20 for both of those is going to be probably quite good. And I think it's quite an interesting way of adding some extra contouring using a filter that's actually not designed for that at all. But anyway, there you go. Another thing we can do is add a stylize and indent. Now, you don't really want to go crazy with this. And also what we need to do is actually put that colorize above it because, as you notice, the indent really messes with the color. So what I'm really going to do here with the indent is turn that softness down to zero. If we just kind of zoom in and have a look at what that's doing. Again, it's just giving us some subtle contouring, not too much. We don't want to make this look sort of 3D. We want to keep that sense of it being a kind of flat design. I might also just add a color and color curves, just to give it all a little bit more punch like that. Maybe just a bit of an S curve like that. We could increase the color on that colorize, maybe a bit more saturation on there. I might also come back to my gradient and just open this out a little bit. So I'm going to set this end value to something like negative 640. And maybe that's kind of a bit more interesting. We're getting some interesting edge artifacts because of the neon filter there. But I actually quite like what they're doing. If you don't, you can just shut this down a bit more and you won't see those. So anyway, I hope that's all been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.